Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about the, the CMS that is behind our uh, website, our conference website called Pacer, and um, <coughs> what uh, brought us there and what problems we had that we needed to, to solve. So this is a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Goran Mekic. Uh, I go by Meka. Uh, on a daily basis. I'm a, a Pyser co-organizer, co I'm a Tilda co-founder, um, web dev by day and a hacker by night. And I really, really, really like uh, automa uh, automation. Uh, that means that even this machine has uh, Ansible rules that are published on GitHub. And I really hate working. Uh, that's probably not the, the um, single uh, unique quality, but, but uh, yeah, I really, really like uh, when things work without me, uh, up to a point, right? Uh, so. We started with a start kit that uh, is like a minimal set of stuff, pages, uh, packages, and all the stuff you need, they're, uh, they're minimal on the start kit. And we have, uh, well, three start kits. One is for the uh, front end, and it's React and MobX. One is for the back end, which is Flask and Python, of course, and PV for the SQL database. Uh, one is to like a Lord of the Rings to, to bind them all, and uh, DevOps re repository, which well starts your back end, front end, configures them to, to see each other and stuff like that. And uh, <coughs> Yeah, I said it's uh, PV and SQL in the back end, but it's really easily uh, exchangeable for, for example, MongoDB. Uh, MongoDB is in a OneLove. You heard about OneLove uh, previously. Uh, so we know the store kit is flexible enough to fulfill all our needs. And uh, uh, one of the needs is for teaching. Uh, in Tilda Center, we have a teaching course, uh, a web development course, which is based on this store kit, something, something in the front end, and a lot of Python in the back end. And uh, that store kit is actually pretty well tested in uh, uh, real world scenarios in real world projects. Uh, so one love is already mentioned. Uh, Pyser is what I'm going to talk about uh, right here. Uh, Tilda learning management system is something we're building for our hackerspace. Uh, what we want to offer is free education for everyone. Uh, so if you have a, I don't know, laptop and uh, internet access, you can go to the website and uh, get whatever course we have there. Uh, right now, that LMS is not written completely. Uh, and uh, it's only our first year that we uh, went the whole circle with the course. So we have at least one course that is complete, but we do plan other courses like uh, system administration, a little bit of network, a little bit of uh, DevOps and uh, whatever DevOps is today. Uh, and. Uh <coughs> There are some private projects. Uh, that I use this tour kit for several companies I worked with uh, when I started as a either a consultant or a developer. I offered my tour kit as, a, as something that is uh, tested at least somewhere. And uh, you may say that I 
could uh, could have started with uh, Django, and actually we did, but I'm gonna get late, uh, to that later. So the features of uh, CMS of uh, Starkit and well, uh, CMS being based on it, on a CMS also, is that it's pretty fast, which is probably the the feature of every single page application. We are just uh, tossing back and forth the JSON, which is really small compared to the whole web application, a whole web page for the traditional uh, web applications. It's a uh, nice looking, uh, I mean, given that I am originally system administrator, if I create something nice that's really extraordinary invent, uh, I don't care about niceness, I care about functionality. Uh, it has a pretty modern stack uh, consisting of uh, Flask uh, REST Plus uh, on the back end that does all the REST API stuff and uh, MobX and uh, React that do the front end uh, MobX mostly for integrating the back end uh, into the back end knowledge, but the knowledge that is uh, uh, return from the backend in a, in a response. It's saved in a mobex. And uh, as I said, I'm a system administrator mostly, so I really care about security. And there are a few of the conferences that I visited. One of them is uh, in Banyaluka, where I learned why my code is not perfect security-wise, and I actually visited quite a few of them that uh, taught me what's wrong with my code. Currently, either everything is perfect or I don't know enough, but I can't tell you anything security-wise that is wrong with it. Uh, later on, we, we we plan to test it properly uh, as not just, hey, I know these uh, procedures are more secure than some other set of procedures. We want to do the, uh, the test in the uh, proper penetration test automated if possible. So on top of that, StartKit, we have, uh, well, three main parts of the, of the CMS. Uh, one is for managing the, the human entities called admins, volunteers, and presenters. Uh, one is events and talks, and the third one is gallery and presentations. So let me start from the bottom because it's most technical and easiest to explain. Uh, gallery and presentations are technically only files. So what we do for that is we manage files somehow. Currently, it's uh, just a plain directory, but we are slowly switching to something more like S3 from Amazon. Minio is at the top of the list to, to be tested, but we'll see what are there any other implementations and how do they work, and if we compare them, what do they bring to us personally. Uh, Events and talks. Uh, event is like a annual happening gathering. Uh, it doesn't have to be annual, but currently it is. Uh, what we want to do with uh, events in the future is name them by, I don't know, well, come up with some names uh, so they are not bound to the year. So you can have, if you have a, a event that is uh, be yearly, you can still manage it wi with the software. And the talks are, well, basically all of us are here for the talks. So it's the, the uh, heart of the LMS, uh, of uh, CMS, sorry. Uh, it's when you look at the schedule, when, when you get uh, 
call for papers uh, when you're dealing with uh, who is going to be where, where, when are the breaks and, and so on. So the heart of the of the CMS is actually in the talks, and uh, there are different people with different access levels to the parts of the site uh, to manage. So admins, volunteers, and presenters. And <coughs> we really try different stacks. Not on the Pyser CMS per se, but on a, uh, on a start kit. And we had started with Django and uh, Angular. Then we realized that uh, for some some parts, uh, some applications, MongoDB is more suitable. So we switched to uh, Flask, MongoDB, and React. All of that stayed just uh, we we don't like to to think that there are more MongoDB than SQL. I think that there's more SQL. That's why the the um, Starkit is predominantly SQL based, but it's really easily easy to switch. And maybe in the future it will get like pip install brackets, no SQL, SQL uh, kind of switch. Uh, Till the center as a hackerspace implemented the the whole code. Uh, I am the lead developer on the project, but there are some parts of the CMS that were borrowed from our other projects, like uh, Tilda Center website, because I didn't feel that I need to implement blog posts all over again. So this code, although it's quite new, the, the parts of that code are, are quite older and uh, a bit more tested. And it's open source. Maybe most of you think about GPL when, when they say open source. I come from BSD world, so we kind of respect uh, companies and company code uh, with a BSD license, you don't have to write a GPL open source code at all. But it would be nice if you inherit something open source, just leave it like that. Uh, in the future, uh, well, the future is always bright. Uh, there is the most uh, asked for uh, feature is a local payment system where you could pay to, s if you live in Serbia, you can pay to a Serbian bank and uh, you magically get your ticket uh, either when you log in next time or you get a, an email with a PDF. Uh, the technical stuff is easy, generating the QR code or uh, Getting the name, email, everything is quite easy. The bank thingy, and we'll see. Uh, I will probably stand here next year telling you, hey, we, we did this this way. So ideally, if you need for a conference in your own town, you would be able to use this. As I said, uh, before, the only directories are used to store the files, and it's really not optimal if we ever try to scale. And I hope we will need to scale next year. Uh, we need something that stores files more efficiently. And Mini.io has a S3-like object, um, files-like object store while it also can be a uh, device to be mounted uh, somewhere. So ideally, you would upload to Mini.io and it would be uh, mounted by your load balancer and serving uh, static files without interacting with the backend. Currently, our CMS is really 
bound to what we need, we as a, a Pacer. And uh, colors and views and uh, themes and all of that is not changeable unless you do the development and then you build your own uh, front end, for example. And uh, there are a lot of, of course, that's going to change in the next version now that we know how we want it to look. And uh, what we are going to edit, uh, add is a possibility that more fields on, a, let's say, landing page are editable so that you can uh, edit uh, CMS for your own custom needs without actually fiddling with the code, which can be tricky. I mean, it depends. Uh, maybe you're organizing IT conference, so it shouldn't be hard for you, but uh, there is a if we ever get a proper API for from any bank in Serbia, I hope we will have this local payment system. And uh, not so hard uh, thing to do is, uh, once you have the backend, is to write the check-in uh, app. You saw the one example of it uh, at the entrance. Uh, the hard part is that nobody until the center does any Android development except you, for example, for a little bit, so we have a lot of learning to do and a new teacher. Uh, we have a lot of uh, pen testing ahead of us. As I said, I really, really value security and there are some stuff that we didn't do. <coughs> we didn't try to overflow anything or stuff like that. Uh, we did try to uh, give our best to implement it with uh, best practices in mind. Just there are no automated tests at this point, and that's going to change, uh, well, tomorrow. And uh, there are stuff in the, even in the uh, start kit that I know that they won't be there tomorrow or in the future. Uh, like there are better uh, API libraries for REST than what we currently use. There are better ways to um, marshal how it's called it, marshal the fields uh, so that you filter uh, properties of an object into JSON and so on. So in the front end, yeah, that there's also a bunch of libraries that we want to update or replace. But uh, on this conference, who cares about front end, right? So what we had, what, uh, yeah, I didn't say wh why we started all this. We checked the alternatives, and we kind of didn't like them. Uh, first, visually, then if you limit yourself to uh, Python-based ones, then uh, the, the, the choice is even uh, smaller. And we said, we don't want anything except Python. I mean, we are Python Serbia, so it would be embarrassing to, to run anything about uh, but that language. So we said, OK, we have these courses uh, based on Python. We have the store kit uh, that is based on Python and something else. And we have everything in place. We have the people, the knowledge, the, the libraries, frameworks, everything. So let's create it. And uh, we doubled that. Um, that thought for a while. We shuffled it. and. Uh, maybe we don't have to do that, and then we came to the local payment system, and now nobody did that, especially not in Python, so we have to. Uh, hopefully, we are offering something more than just the CMS to the, to the community with um, uh, LMS, I, I promised, with some other applications that are 
still cooking in our heads that we're going to talk about probably next year or some of the next year's next conferences uh, and uh, what I'm trying to say is that Pyser as a CMS is just the top of the iceberg of the software we are writing uh, or software set that we are trying to create and uh, stay tuned for other other implementations of interesting services. So if you have any questions, now is the time. I don't bite, I promise. Yel to Monter and Rui. Test? Okay. It's fixed. Uh, so you mentioned uh, for static files serving images and stuff, uh, you want to use Minio, right, and upload files to somewhere and then serve them statically without interacting with the software. Did I understand it correctly? Yeah. Cool. Um, how do you plan to solve access rights to those files without interacting with software and permission management admin volunteers and uh, presenters, speakers, whatever, if you are not interacting with the software? Well, first, I don't know. The, the, the honest answer is I don't know because we have to evaluate the, the software, how it works and how we want it to work. And at the top of my head, well, almost all content on Pyster is public anyway, so we don't care. But let's say that you uploaded a file that is presentation but shouldn't be available right now maybe some bucket uh, bucket to bucket copy so we have a private one and a public one but i don't know once we do the research i'll know more there was a question there uh, you said you uh, used the django at first what other uh, web frameworks have you tested, maybe? And why, why Flask in particular? Uh, I didn't. <laughs> uh, so my uh, slope was I learned Django because I had to. I had a band and it needed a site and nobody in the band did web development at that time. So I had to learn Django, but later on I realized if you need MongoDB or any no SQL, it's a real hassle with uh, Django. Then we switched to, to Flask and just remain there. And until it shows some, how to say, obstacles it's cool maybe in the future something that is more async io uh, i know that there is a pyramid and web something yeah uh, so yeah i know there are other solutions out there we just we were just too happy with the current flask setup that we didn't actually test anymore Okay, so I was just wondering, what are you serving Flask with? Like, is it Gunicorn or? Oh, uh, yeah, it's Gunicorn. What, what I didn't mention, the, the one that binds them all, the, the DevOps repository, is uh, one that actually has this, all these little pieces that you don't need for programming. Gunicorn script is one of them, and all the scripts for development are POSIX compliant shell scripts that don't work on Mac currently. I know why, because Mac doesn't have a read line implemented the way we need it. There is a workaround just for the past two months I didn't have a time. I, I was preparing something else. So, um, 
Yeah, to, to give a little bit more answer, the whole script set is, uh, you can run it anywhere. We tried it on Windows, uh, it does run. I run it on FreeBSD. Most of the hackerspace runs it on, I don't know, Fedora and Debian. And we're really trying to, to be as supportive of other operating system we don't like as possible. Okay, anything else? Then that would be all. Thank you very much.